Okay, now I'm going to talk about the magic wand tool. If you hit the W key, you'll switch over to that. You may have to hit Shift W if you're on the quick selection tool. The way this tool works is it selects based on color and luminance. So wherever you click on a color, it'll select a certain amount of tolerance above and beyond the exact point that you select. So there you can see I clicked on a part of the snow and since this image is pretty similar, it selects a large portion based on that point. Just like the other selection tools, I can shift click to add more to my selection or I can alt click to subtract from. You can also intersect by hitting alt and shift and you'll get the little X if you click, but it's kinda worthless if you ask me. As with all the other tools, you can hit the caps lock key to get a precision cursor. This is pretty useful for this tool. So if you want to select a specific point, instead of using the little fairy wand that you get, and not entirely positive where it selects, it actually selects inside that tiny little starburst there, but if you hit the caps lock key, the little point, then you're then you really know where it's going to go. So then I can select just in that little area. I'll hit Control D to deselect that. If you right click, you can either select all, which does the entire image. There you can see it's going around there. Another way to do that even quicker is just hit Control A and it'll select all. Also from the right, you can go into the color range dialog box, which is uh, something I'll talk about in the future. If you have a selection saved, which I'll talk about in the future also, I'll just do this real quick. And you lose that selection, you can right click and go into load selection. And then there you'll find the sky selection that I saved. Just hit OK and you'll get that same selection back. That actually saves into the channels, but I'll talk about channels in the future also. And I'll hit caps lock to make you go back to the wand image there. Talk about the options bar. Up here you've got the basic selections like add, subtract, and intersect like all the other selection tools. And then you have tolerance. What this does is it selects how many luminance levels above and below the point that you selected. 32 is the default but you can go anywhere to 255 and down to 0. Of course 255 selects more and 0 selects not really anything more than the point that you selected, that you clicked. This is actually based on the different color channels and combines the selection based on that, but I'll talk about channels in the future. A good way to show this is with a gradient. So I'll just make a small gradient here on a new layer. And I'll go to the gradient tool and I'll just make a gradient across the entire image. And then zooming way in you're not really able to see the uh, the different levels of black to white here. It's all pretty gray. But if I have my tolerance on zero, you can see that it only selects a small portion. Whereas I'll back up. There you can kind of see some lines. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it after I compress this video. But I'll lose that and I'll go up to the default of 32 and I'll select. I'll have to go out even further and you can see that it's gone 32 luminance levels higher and 32 luminance lower. And if you consider 255 is white and 0 is black. If I go all the way up to 255, it'll do 255 levels both ways, so it'll select that whole section. And for right now, I'll just go ahead and shut that layer off and deselect. And the next checkbox, I'll put this back down to 32. Next checkbox is anti-alias, which I've talked about before. If you don't have that selected and you click on a point, and I'll just go to where the selection edge is here, and if I hit delete, you can see that it does very harsh edges. And I'll just control Z to go back, deselect that, hit anti-alias again, and then go to this edge here, hit delete. You can see that it kind of smooths it out, kind of makes a gradient along the edge there. So generally speaking, always keep the anti-alias box checked. This contiguous box, if I'm selecting a portion of the sky up here, there you can see that it selected this area and it's all connected. That's what contiguous means. If I shut that off and do the same selection, it'll get that same color throughout the image. So it 
grabs most of the sky throughout the image. So this is a pretty handy little checkbox here. I use both uh, having it on and off, but for now I'll keep it turned on. Sample all layers. I'll turn on this gradient layer again so you can see how this works. So if I'm selecting the snow and I don't have sample all layers on, and if I click, it'll select everything on that layer that I'm currently selected. And if I deselect and check that box, and then I click on the snow again, it'll take in this gradient into account and only select the snow up until that point because this is too much different from what I was clicking on. This is a pretty handy one also. Uh, generally speaking I have it shut off because you're always working on the layer that you're working on anyway, but either way it can be used quite handily. One note to make is that all of these options only take into account for the next selection that you make, so you can't make a selection and then turn anti-alias on or off and then it'll do that function. So you'll have to make sure what you want is selected before you select the portion of the image. And again Refine Edge I'll talk about in a future tutorial since that's a pretty in-depth dialog box. One other little trick if you're zoomed way in here and you try to make a selection along this edge and you're trying to just get this snow and somehow all of this gets selected you can see it better if I zoom out but this tree and all of this other stuff got selected and I certainly didn't want that, I just wanted the snow. If you switch over to your eyedropper tool, and since I can't see it here because my window is so small for this recording, hit this little arrow here and it'll pop this out into the classic mode and you can get to the eyedropper. If you switch over to your eyedropper, and up here you've got sample size 51 by 51 average. What that's doing is it's selecting a square of 51 by 51 pixels and averaging out the uh, color and luminance within that square. So to go back and get just the snow when I'm zoom way in here, you can change over to the point sample, switch back to your wand tool, zoom back in here, and I'll have to deselect that. And if I select again, you can see that it did right along that snow edge again. And what that does is the point sample will select exact pixel that I'm selecting on. With my tolerance it gets all of this snow. But if it's selecting something that you don't really understand why it's selecting, check on the eyedropper. And sometimes you want an average, like if I wanted to get all of this snow here and I wanted an average, then I could change that back point sample to an average. But most often I either have it on point sample, 3x3, or 5x5. Well, that wraps up the comprehensive tutorial on the magic wand and quick selection tool for Photoshop CS3. Thank you for viewing. Subscribe to my blog at chrislanephoto.com slash blog to receive updates with new tutorials and more. Cheers!